Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here on Horizon. Well, amid all the sound and fury that is today's politics, the sign up for the Affordable Care Act is now well underway. For many of us, almost half of all Americans, little changes. Our employer provided insurance stays the same. But for Americans without health insurance or for those whose plans were unaffordable, they now have other options. Whether or not this bankrupts the nation or proves to be a vast improvement is yet to be determined. Today, we're going to focus on not only how we got here, but where we are going when it comes to health care in this country. And that is where our Andy Barth picks up the story. Rob, here are some dates I want you to consider when we're talking about the state's health care and the Affordable Care Act. Now, we're going to be working backwards in time. The first date we want to look at is January 1st of 2015. Now, this is the date where large employers are mandated to provide health insurance for employees or face a penalty. Now, the next date is March 31st of 2014. This is when open enrollment in the exchanges closes. This is also the date when individuals who do not have insurance may face a penalty of $95 or 1% of their annual income, whichever is higher. Now, January 1st of 2014 is when coverage begins for the plans purchased through the exchange. And the most pertinent date right now is October 1st of 2013. This is when insurance exchange began and provides the online ability for consumers to apply for individual health coverage and compare rates. And while signup is underway, many questions are left unanswered. It's landmark legislation Substance. that despite lawsuits and multiple attempts in Congress to repeal it, this law is a train wreck, is now the nation's law. If you're one of the 85% of Americans who already have insurance, you've already got new benefits and protections under this law that you didn't have before. According to the Census Bureau, there are more than 685,000 Oklahomans with no health insurance. And under the Affordable Care Act, 370,000 of them will be eligible for federal tax credits to help them pay for coverage. That's 9% of the state's population. And Stan and Hupfeld the hand, is the right former CEO of Integris today. Health and says this statistic impacts all policyholders financially. The uninsured do impact what you're paying. They do impact what you're paying in premiums. They do impact uh, what you're paying every time you go to the hospital. Because in the past and currently, uh, there's hundreds of thousands of people in Oklahoma who do not have insurance, who eventually show up in hospital emergency rooms, for which policyholders ultimately pay their bill. Which is what the Affordable Care Act is designed to remedy. Yet questions still abound. My question is from my granddaughter. She works 30 hours a week, makes $9 an hour. At a forum sponsored by Oklahoma Watch, most concerns centered on the confusion surrounding the new law. Basically, you guys are telling us that this is going to be available, but you don't really know for sure exactly what is going to be available. This really is just about creating an option for people who don't have insurance. Andrew Rice is a former Oklahoma State Senator and current Executive Director for the Variety Care Foundation and says it's important to know the facts. I think the most important thing for someone who's uninsured is to try to get in front of one of the health care navigators. As of now, 36 states are participating in the federal government-run exchanges. Oklahoma, not one of them, but there are some options for state residents. There are five companies offering private health coverage in Oklahoma under the Affordable Care Act. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oklahoma, Community Care, Global Health, Coventry Health, and Aetna. Now, of the four out of every 10 Oklahomans who already receive health insurance from their employers, they don't have to change plans, but Rice says they may want to check their options. I would encourage everybody to shop on the exchanges. It's a competitive marketplace where these different insurance companies are competing to, to have better plans. It's, it's great for everybody to shop and try to find a better deal. Changes that affect not only employees, but employers as well. Come January 1st of 2014, all employers with more than 50 employees will be required to offer health coverage, while those with fewer than 50 remain exempt. And Sandy Montgomery says she has clients who need answers. I work for a CPA's office in Yukon, and we have a lot of small businesses that we do taxes for, and they are calling me and asking me how this is going to affect them. I'm concerned. And Montgomery says right now there are more questions than answers. That are 
I need to tell them which of these employers are going to be required to have handouts available to their employees. I know anybody that's subject to the FLSA is required to have the handouts available. And also, anybody with more than 50 employers has to have the shared responsibility or provide health insurance. Most of the, of the customers that I have are going to have less than 50 employees, and so it's going to be just the handout thing that I'm, I'm interested in. Now, while most everyone will be required to have health insurance by March 31st of 2014, some qualify for federal tax credits to help them pay for it, and it's all based off the federal poverty level. Uh, generally, it's a set amount. So the federal poverty level is $11,000 for a single person. It's higher for a family of two, uh, higher for a family of three, higher for a family of four. 100% of that, so one times that, so $22,000 for an individual would be 100% of the federal poverty level. From 100% to 400%, um, it is going, there are going to be tax credits available for people to help them pay for their for the premiums that they have on health, on health plans on the exchange. The periphery. And for those people already on plans with limited coverage, those will be changing too. Under the Affordable Care Act, everything from emergency services to prescription drugs are covered. Under the new law, private providers must meet the same standards. I firmly believe that the law over time is going to, there will be kinks that need to be worked out, there will be unintended things that are difficult about it that I, I trust Congress and future administrations to resolve and fix, but I think on par the law is going to create a lot more access for people and I do believe the economics behind it are going to bring costs down. The more people are covered, costs will come down. A lot of the costs in health care are compensation for people who don't have insurance who get very sick. Hopefully creating a buyer's market when it comes to health coverage. Now, while this law is not considered government mandated, those who don't purchase health insurance by March 31st of 2014 are subject to a $95 fine, which will rise to $695 by the year 2016. So let me play devil's advocate here. What keeps a person from paying those fines, which are quite a bit less than the premiums, and then only entering into the system when and if they need care? Certainly, well, open enrollment continues until March of 2014, so people can take their time when trying to find their insurance, but those who choose not to purchase that not only face those IRS fines, but they also face those out-of-pocket medical expenses as well. Yeah, and the unfortunate fact is you need more healthy people in the pool than you do sick, or the math just doesn't work. That's right, Robin. In great part, that means people my age who also at the same time face the highest unemployment rates when the economic, uh, when our economy took a downturn and cut out vast segments of jobs. Now, one last question. In your piece, you said there's going to be a gap between those people eligible for Medicaid and those people they're going to get the tax credits for the ACA to help them pay for their premiums. That's right, and unfortunately that means some of the poorest people here in Oklahoma. Now, like many other states in the nation, Oklahoma refused the federal government uh, expansion of Medicaid, and so that means that our very poorest people will not be able to apply for the federal tax credits to help them pay for the insurance, and very well could go uninsured. Sounds kind of unfair. It, it, it does sound unfair, but if there's a small silver lining to that dark cloud, those who are unable to afford the health coverage because they're in that low income bracket, they will not be fined for not having health coverage. All right, thank you so much, Andy. Now, if you'd like more information about the Affordable Care Act, just head to our website's value added section at okhorizon.com. There, we have a link to an infographic of the potential penalties if you choose to go uninsured. And also have our full interview with Stan Hupfield, the former Integris Hospital CEO and the author of the book, Political Malpractice. Now, when we return, a look into some of the bigger issues surrounding health care with an Oklahoman with a very unique perspective.